in tithes and offering. You're cursed with a curse, and you, are, you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. And see if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Now the problem with them, with the people in Malachi's day, was that they wanted the blessings of tithing, but they didn't want to, uh, uh, to pay the price. They didn't want to go through the process. For back in the first chapter, if you would flip over into the first chapter of Malachi, verse 8 says, when you offer the blind as sacrifice, is it not evil? When you offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer it to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you favorably, says the Lord of hosts? What was they doing? What were they doing? They were going through the outward practice of tithing because, of course, they did not tithe in money at that time. They tithed with agriculture and grain and with animals. Well, what they would do was they would come to the temple with their tithe. And uh, what was their tithe? Well, it was a blind animal. It was a maimed animal. It was something that they could never use. It was what was left over after they had gotten every, everything out of life that they wanted. They gave God the leftovers. Somebody say leftovers. Now you say, I can't imagine anybody doing that. But you know as well as I do, if, at times, at, at one time or another, if we're honest with ourselves, uh, we've done that too. We tried to total up everything and we say, well, if I have enough left over, I'll give some to God. But God doesn't want your leftovers. God wants to be at, your, at the very top. God wants to be your top priority. God deserves uh, what God deserves is, your, is the first, and what God desires is to be first. Another term for tithe in the Bible is the term first fruits. Somebody say first fruits. What is a first fruits? Well, first fruits means as soon as you harvest it. In the Old Testament, as soon as they harvest any of the grain, they would take the first fruits of it, and give it to God. That's what it means to tithe. What that really says to us as we begin to understand uh, uh, the tithing uh, is before anything else is put down on paper, on our budget, before, before you try to figure out how the finances are going, ask yourself the question, is God first in my life? And if he's not, do I want him to be? If God is first, then you need to treat him like he's first. And I think sometimes God must be a little weary, a little bit weary of us walking around in the church talking about he's first in our life. But we don't treat him that way. You know, you've heard, you've heard the testimonies. We hear the testimonies all the time. Giving honor to God who is first in my life. Is he really first in your life? God wants to be treated like he's number one. How do we treat God like he's number one? Well, as soon as we get our money, we write the first check to him. You put him above everything else. And what happens when, when you write the God the first check every month or every other week, depending on when you get paid, it reminds you that he's number one. He's our top priority. Tithing is a way to have our values and our priorities reconfirmed to us on a regular basis. Yes, uh, the T says, I'm treating God first as top priority. He's priority number one. Number two, the R in the tithing process means returning to God what is properly his. 
Can I say that again? Can you, can you say that with me? Returning to God what is properly His. I told you on last week that God originated everything. God owns everything. God is over everything. And since God owns everything, we don't own anything. Therefore, we're the managers of what God has given us. Everything we have is ultimately from God. The air we breathe, the, the food we eat, the house we live in, even the job we work on, it, God owns it all. And this is, con, this is a consistent witness throughout the Bible. Watch carefully how, what the Bible says about God's ownership. In Leviticus 25, he says, the land is mine. In Psalm 24, he says, the earth is the Lord's. In Psalm 50 and 10, he says, Every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. In Haggai 2 and 8, he says, The silver is mine and the gold is mine. In Ezekiel 18 and 14, it says, All souls are mine. And in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, he says, You are not your own. You are bought with a price. Every individual belongs to God. Everything you have belongs to God. Therefore, we're just managers of what God has entrusted to us. That's why tithing is returning to, to God what is properly his. It's his already. He just wants to see if you're going to trust him enough to obey his instructions on tithing. Well, you say, Pastor, I work for this money. This is my home, man. My investments, your ability to do, to do that comes from God. Deuteronomy 8, 18, this is what we ought to hang on our walls or on our refrigerator. This is the, a good word for us to hang on our refrigerator. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get well. If you are blessed with a good job or a business, that allows you to live comfortable, it came from God. And all God is asking that you do is you return to him what is properly his, and that is the first 10% of your increase. That's why this time during this year is so critical uh, to us as a church. It's not just uh, about getting our money matters right. It's, it, it helps us to reorganize our priorities. It reaffirms what's important to us. Church, if you want to know what's important to you, just go home. Don't do it now. <laughs> just go home and read your check stubs or your bank statements because that will tell you what you really believe in. Well, tithing is the first of all, is first of all, treating God as top priority. Tithing is treating God as first top priority. Secondly, tithing is re returning to God what is properly his. And here's the third point. The you in trusting is understanding God's promise to provide. Understanding God's promise to provide. Now, God promises to provide in two ways in this text. First of all, here in Malachi, he promises to provide for his own work. Somebody say own work. Have you ever wondered how is the church supposed to function? How is the ministry supposed to function? Well, God says through Malachi 3 verse, uh, verse 10, bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Now that's a different economy, a different way of thinking.